it's Sean. What? I'm going to go. Luckily, they're uh, stationed here in Chicago. They have one in like Nashville and one in Austin or Houston, whatever. It doesn't matter. But their You're main going headquarters. To a hard rock cafe. I wish. No, that's oh, it. That's man. in Ohio, baby. Dude, I would love to lose my virginity in a hard rock cafe. Well, too bad you lost it in college, baby. I know. It should have been a hard rock cafe. The mistakes I've made are numerous and plentiful. Where are you going? You got that hard cock taffé because <laughs> originally the penis is like a Laffy Taffy and then it gets hard and then it's still squishy but somehow hard. It's baffling. But no, Are I'm, you scientifically explaining my own penis to me? Yeah, I'm explaining okay, I'm mansplaining you. all penises and I'm so glad you didn't hear me accidentally Not all penises. Start James. to call you Nicole. Oh, my God. Okay, so... Uh, my penis Sean, is much nicer than Nicole's. How dare you? I'm going to go to the headquarters of Iron Galaxy and Whoa. smash all of their goddamn servers so it won't distract you in the Rumbleverse. Okay, I was... For those of you wondering, I was, I think, four minutes behind on the podcast Eight today. Eight minutes. It's two oh. It's 2.09, yeah, and we've been recording for a minute. Yeah, and that was ready three minutes ago. Well, I guess you said we started the call at 2.06, so 205. you are six, but then all the other times you've been late last week was a short episode because you're like an hour late. It was a short episode because we don't need to record a five and a half episode po hour podcast. Oh, five yeah. hour podcast. Uh, well, no, you had that meeting. Oh, yeah, I had a big, yes. I forget what it was, but oh, yeah, it was a meeting I can't talk about, but it was very good. Henry, see, Henry. and I told you when you were in the Rumbleverse, too. It was probably with Iron Galaxy here in Chicago. Probably with Iron Galaxy here in Chicago. No, it was like a, it was a different meeting. I didn't. I, I was late last week because I had to be professional for something else. I was late this week by five minutes because I was playing Rumbleverse, which is a great game. And I won. And I think so. Thanks for asking, James. I did win my match. I'm very impressive. Yeah, out of 40, it's not like you're in Fortnite out of 100. Yeah, but also like not like in Fortnite, I don't need my guns. All I got is my will, my wits, and my sweat. Welcome to Sweaty Time Pro Wrestling, baby. We also have these guns in that, right? Oh, yeah, my big old stinky muscles. My name is Sean, and my muscles stink to high heaven. I am joined by my friend, my host also, and my loverly, loverly, loverly James McCollum, the marshland monster himself. And a new co-host of the premiering podcast, The Height what, of Horror, what? with Presley Bracken. Listen to it. Subscribe, fuckers. Yeah, you pieces of shit. How dare you listen to this lovely podcast detailing Lucha Underground Season 1, Episode 8. But before we get into that, James, just like, what's up, baby? How's the new podcast? It's good. Episode zero dropped yesterday on Halloween, Ooh, but also this is dropping on Halloween because happy Halloween, guys. Happy Wee Halloween. Boom, 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 boom. We did not prepare anything Halloween related for this episode. Uh, speak for yourself because later on, I on did my not segment, prepare anything Halloween related. I barely know what day it is. I'm still pretty sure it's 2014 where Tavo Guerrero is the greatest wrestler of all time. I want to say greatest wrestler. Maybe if you're trying to wrangle some shit shit out your ass then Listen, you are machete come around to chavo guerrero therefore i have come around to chavo guerrero uh-uh no Sh thank machete you is all over this episode and again they do not call him danny trejo once uh -uh. it is machete maybe it's copyright his name his name yeah i don't know if you're allowed to do that hey you can't use my name unless well no i guess that's any name you can't use my name unless you pay me a certain amount of money Unless you're a public figure. So if before he okay. became a public figure, he copywrote his name, he wrote it in the death note, and mm -hmm. then no one can say it. No, unless you eat an apple. Is that part of death note? You've never seen Death Note? No, Nicole watched it, and I believe Nicole has a very good barometer of what I will and won't like. So That's she's true. like, no. Nah. You two are the same person. I've never nah. seen you in the same room at the same time. You, I have mainly only ever seen Nicole <laughs> in the same room with me. I don't know when you haven't. Untrue. Maybe if I go to the bathroom before we record a podcast, then you're like, oh, yeah, I see only Nicole here. I'm pretty sure you are Victor Victoria, a movie I have not seen. I don't even know what that is. 
It's a it's a story. Speaking of movies, yeah. What do you think of Death Note? No, uh, <laughs> we watched Return of the Living Dead for the first time, and Nicole left saying, "James, I, I think that's the greatest movie I've ever seen." That's the punks in the graveyard, right? Yeah, baby. It's a very good movie. I, I ask yeah, Nicole I every time after we finish up a movie. I say, hey, on Letterboxd, out of five stars, what would you give it? And she says, it's got to be five. It's a perfect yeah. movie. It's very fun. I remember I saw that for the first time flipping around. It was on IFC when I was in college. And like we didn't I was a freshman. I didn't know really what to do outside of my dorm room. So like we had a couple of friends on the floor and I just remember flipping on. One of the best line readings I've ever seen in my life is uh, the a, the EMTs get tricked by zombies. Yeah. Which is awesome. Like, the zombies are not just zombies. They run full speed. They're brutal and they're tricky. They're great. And they're little scamps. They're the Chavo Guerrero of the zombie worlds. They're little scamps. I wouldn't say... They're sh- monsters, but they're scamps. Chavo's not a How scamp. Is he? he is a monster. Is? I don't know. The because way... The- he keeps, they kept going on the radios of the paramedics and say, send more paramedics. And then with the <laughs> cops, send more cops. Yeah. And I love the one paramedic who's like his friend, Jerry, goes out there to do something. And he's just sitting there for like five minutes and while he hears the screams of somebody. And he just very slowly turns around, Jerry? And then it gets absolutely mauled by a zombie. Hell yeah. Maybe the Penta. Maybe they're the Pentagon. Pentagon Jr. of... Zombie. Wait, hold on. I lost the metaphor. Pentagon Jr. is a scamp. Yes. Is what I'm trying to say. All right. And he's also very fast. And he is a, he puts on a fucking banger today. Oh, my God. Yeah, he does. But before we venture into the temple, James, where must we go? We have to unearth Earth. the underground. Yeah, Howard Stern's penis, Baba Booey. Yeah, yeah, Howard Stern. Penis, Is this the most unlistenable podcast we've released? No, we did like 32 of ICP. That's true. Who, baby? Sean... James. Recently friend of MLM Pod, Ian Bracken, host of Horror Ooh. Corridor, put out a vidsticle, meaning it's no. a listicle, but it's in video format, coined that term yesterday. Papa Bowie. And it was titled 31 Horrorcore Recommendations for Halloween. Hey, that's this holiday. Uh-huh. There's awesome picks on that list, but I got a bone to pick. Whoa. Because it left me pissed, not because I wasn't included on it. Well, all of my friends and close collaborators <laughs> were. And I thought, finally, oh, my God, nepotism would help me out for once in my life. Seeing as the aforementioned Presley Bracken, the mother of Ian's child, and I have a podcast together. And I created a very nice horror synth album, perfect for Halloween nights. But that's not my issue, Seanathan. And Taylor. Okay, what is it? It was the fact that Comatose was listed as number 20. Comatose? Guys. 20? No, Comatose you either put at number 31 for people who just watched the first two minutes of the video, so they come away from the video already knowing who number one should be, or you put Coma at number one because he is, when it comes to Halloween, is mm-hmm. fucking horror core. So today yeah. we're discussing Comatose's 2001 album, The Uglier. But first, Sean. Oh my gosh, there's so many things happening. I'm at the edge of my seat. I'm about to pee my pants and I don't need a new pair. We need to take a trip back to 2009 when The oh. Ugly was released. Wow. So, what the fuck's that? The Uglier is a reworked, re-recorded version of The Ugly. So you have The Uglier, that's come out, oh, maybe in another 12 years we'll get The Ugliest. Ooh, it's just gonna be a picture of Chavo Guerrero, you son of a bitch. Oh, fuck, dude. I fucking hate him so much, I swear to God. I thought I came around and then you changed my mind again. Uh Uh-huh, that's my shit. I make people hate other people. (laughs) (laughs) James, tell me about The Ugly. 
it's re-recorded all of that and it overshadows the original 100% which is hard to do if you listen to those reworked or I guess just re-recorded Taylor Swift albums you're like well Mm -hmm. I enjoy the originals more because it just has that liveliness to it where these just feel like she went into a booth re-recorded the stuff so she can keep all of that sweet sweet cashish because she don't own the masters she don't own the publishing rights just the songwriting credits Mm -hmm. taylor swift noted underground artist got it as i said it overshadows the original 100 percent, which is crazy to do when i tell you this story okay 2009 october I'm heading to Adam Sample's house for a Halloween get-together. I love Adam Sample's Opera Man. I, I don't know what that means. Oh, I love Adam Sample's Happy Gilmore. Oh, okay, okay, you're saying Sandler instead. I'm more of a little, uh, what's, what's a long way to say? Oh, I love a little <laughs> Nicholas. There we go. Ah, tiny Nicole ass. I love him. Ooh, I love Nicole ass. Hey, yo. Hey, come on now. You're the same person. <laughs> Nicole, I once convinced, like, to the, not, like, fully convinced, but Nicole is like, fuck, that would just be my luck. I would say that Nicole and I, like, I'm a figment of Nicole's imagination. I used to do that to my roommates. Hell yeah. Yeah. We are the same person. We might be the same person. Oh, my I've God. I've never seen us in the same room together at the same time. <laughs> I mean, if we're figments of Nicole's imagination, we could still be in the same room. I know my job right now, I'm always walking into my editor's office who's like, give me pictures of the Marshland monster on my desk immediately. And I have to be like, "Uh uh-oh, I sure hope we're not the same person because it's harder to photograph yourself. Yeah, and then you suck the tea off from his his thick mustache. Yeah. Because J. Joma Jameson has... Has a mustache, yeah. A thick one, and it's, it's, it's so porous. And it's always steeped in tea. Man's always drinking his sweet tea. Yeah, because he's like, hey, I can't do coffee anymore. If I'm, it's the doctor said I either need to cut out the coffee or the cigars. I'm not cutting out the cigars, bitch. Yeah, but I need something to have this Parker boy suck the juices off of my mustache. If Uh it's not coffee, I guess it's going to be tea. I can't not have this Parker boy not sucking some kind of juice off my mustache. That's ridiculous. I read a newspaper here. But it's fine if the Parker bros don't suck anything off. Wait, what's wrong with the Parker bros? Well, no, because they're so... board games. No, they're so elite that it's like, okay, well, I can't force them to suck my mustache. Anybody will suck your mustache... This fucking elitism, this classism needs to end. One big old mustache sucking orgy in the middle of town square. Eat the rich. I said it and I meant it. I'm so confused on this concept. I'm suck comatose's mustache dry. I don't think comatose has a mustache. Comatose, you heard it here. You must grow a mustache for us. (laughs) Yeah, then drink some tea. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. And Sean will suck off that juice. So I hear the uglier was like a wild album. Okay, so I go to Adam (laughs) Sample's house. I walk in. I'm kind of in a daze, and I say this. I think I'm going to quit doing horrorcore because Comatose did it. The Ugly is a perfect horrorcore record, and it can't be topped. And, end quote, bless my friend's heart because they truly acted like they cared about this revelation when I know they did not at all. Hold on. How did you know they did not care? Oh, trust me. I know they don't because I uh, they— None of them listen to horrorcore. The closest someone came is Tyler Wright would listen to Psycho's The Snuff Reels. Okay. So it was more of those, we care about you, but we don't know what you're talking about. Exactly. Exactly. However, I hope my high school friends are able to Sherlock Holmes their own mind addicts, because if not, they have so much useless horrorcore trivia living up there (laughs) rent free. But Sean, (laughs) James... If The Ugly is a perfect album, how can The Uglier be better? Yeah, what the fuck is wrong with you? Are you lying to me? Why would you lie to me? I'm never gonna suck tea off your mustache if you keep lying to me. Well, simply put, Sean, low end in the mix, a wider stereo spectrum, 
updated Ooh. drum patterns, and wow. just a more experienced comatose at the boards. Ha, but Tootie, bless my soul, I actually do love that. I think I've, I feel like on one of these podcasts, I talked about the time I saw The Addicts, uh, which was like a 1970s sort of power pop, uh, like early pop punk type of band. Uh, big oi 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 vibes. They're like, Sherlock Holmes spends a lot of time up here reorganizing his memories. That's them. But but it was one of those things. I remember getting so excited. They, they, I think their first album dropped like 76, 78. So oh. they're an older band. That's when you were born. Mm-hmm. I am an older man myself. But I age like fine milk. But I remember seeing them and like being really excited because they've... As much as much as like it's it's interesting to see artists sort of age in one to two camps. One is kind of like I made it, it's fine, whatever, like really coasting, and then the other ones who are just like, oh no, I still love this shit. I've just learned how to do it, do it uh, cleaner mm -hmm. and more efficiently. And it's just, it's fascinating to me to see like, hey, I would I really blew up when I was an angry young person and I had angry young person energy. Now I'm still pissed off at the world, but I know how to, I just know the technique to express myself cleaner. And that shit's just, that's so cool to me. I fucking love that. Yeah. There's also, I believe, other reasons why he recorded it, but specifically he's like, the microphone I used sucked and I don't like listening to it. So I'm going to make sure I enjoy listening to these songs. And he did it, Sean. That's amazing. He reworked this 10-year-old album and made it fun to go back to. I also chose this album out of his many spooky atmospheric records because I think there is a flawless Halloween playlist within it that tells a story. It's creepy. It's awesome. And they're also my recommendations. So here's what you do. Put this in a playlist. Go Nameless, The Dead Walk. Speaking of Return of the Living Dead, I was quoting that a lot of the times when I watch horror movies that I've never seen. There will be scenes in it that I can quote word for word because horrorcore artists will sample that dialogue. Hell yeah. And the, <laughs> and the Return of the Living Dead is such a great movie to sample because that uh -huh. shit is crazy. Yeah. So, Nameless, The Dead Walk, Dirty Little Secret, The Ugly, Darkness Forever, and then A Long Night. This is that artful, quality horrorcore that I can defend the entire genre with, and I thank you, Comatose, for making it. Because this is, when we were doing uh, Shuffling the Deck... Mm -hmm. All the time when you're like, yeah, horrorcore, I think kind of sucks. And I'm like, no, 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 listen Wait, to Comatose. I never said horror. When did I say horrorcore sucks? Uh, there were times back at, like early on, oh. you're like, I don't know if this has any legs. Like, can it really keep going? And I was like, no, I, no, 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 Sean. Or you said it was corny. I'm a, that's so that's so interesting to me because I think I like horrorcore a lot before that podcast. Are you sure I just wasn't talking about the insane clown posse themselves? I, because I remember defending horrorcore a lot, specifically saying, but Sean, like, make sure you listen to Comatose because he's like real good and does it very artfully. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm surprised. I'm not disagreeing. I'm I'm just surprised because like, I know I'm such a fan of like Dr. Octagon and Cool Keith and uh, he's kind of not, he always said he was never technically horrorcore, but uh, Tyler, the creator was actually kind of the first time i sat down and was like i like hip-hop what have i been doing my whole life um which is very late and very poser of me i don't i'm confused my own brain confuses me as it does every week <laughs> but comatose the uglier check it out yeah if you and if you're curious because again it's, it's one of those things if you're a music nerd i'm kind of like now just fascinated by like listening to the ugly and then the uglier I will like, send you files to the ugly because it's not available anywhere in completion to listen to. Comatose, you tricky bastard. You sending me those files so I can listen to will give me a unique opportunity, would it not, James? Is that the name of this episode? That is the name of this okay. episode. A unique opportunity. Have you been sh hanging out with R2 Shelby to learn in transitions? I have been locked Segways? in a montage, a hyperbolic time chamber of mo the montage of learning transitions, segues, star wipes, and all sorts of ways to get to the next talking point. Speaking of transitions. And star wipes. And Lucha Libre. I started playing the Lucha Libre game for Xbox 360, and when I was making my character, 
I realized slowly, I was like, oh, I'm just color scheming this as the trans flag. And I was like, hey, that's what we're doing, guys. Hell yeah. How how was it? I, cause I, I saw you were playing it and I couldn't, I was at work. I was trapped. The game is very fun besides when it is, a, if it's a one-on-one match, awesome. If it's a two-on-two match, great. If it's you versus Two or more people, it absolutely dog shit. They did not play (laughs) test this because it's just you can't get a punch in. And it's so hard to, you know, in Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. You can lock on to someone and then you can push a button to toggle between the people you're locked on to. Yeah. As most wrestling games kind of need. Yes. Usually a default. Your default locked on. You always locked on to someone Mm -hmm. and then you can switch you can switch who it is with like the push of a button, usually like a shoulder button or something. This one you cannot, which made it so fucking difficult. Yeah, especially after the after the the matches we saw in this episode, that's like extra frustrating to me. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Spoilers is a lot of multiple multiple person matches, which is very can be very exciting. Yeah, can be a lot of like, oh, look at all this cool shit, and to not be able to do that in the game is in a uh, choice. Yeah, I forgot. Who do you remember who developed it? Was that Midway? Because I think that's on the TNA engine, which is a game I also didn't get to play. Uh, but I wish I did because I liked TNA. Because I remember it coming out. Because I remember it coming out after. That's why I'm surprised it's not Midway. But Midway might have uh, already closed as a company by then. Uh, rest in peace, you fucking butchers of good video games. But like, yeah, because because I think if it's the one I if it, if I'm correct, that's that ran off the TNA engine. Which is an awesome company. We will. We might talk about it someday. That's the time we watched Eric Bischoff in a porta potty get poop put uh, put up on him. So you know, quality art. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, what my first note from this is: absolutely, Lucha Underground will have ruined. Will when I try to watch other wrestling, I'm like, this sucks. Why isn't it Lucha Underground? But I, I don't think that ruins it. I think that's good. Because you should strive to be good. You know, I don't like then sometimes with like niche genres where we put up with mediocrity because it's in our niche genre mm-hmm. or a niche medium and we love it. And it's like, no, don't settle for mediocrity just because not a lot of people know about your thing. You should still strive to make it good and interesting. And admittedly, Lucha Underground does such a good job for new viewers because they I think one of the things they focus on is uh out of the boxness there's another there's a better word for what i'm trying for that but like you don't need to know anything going into it because a lot of these guys weren't you know didn't appear on american television so they're introducing a lot of people like this episode is a great introduction for a lot of things because it doesn't have to rely on you knowing who these people are i mean in the case of tna who these people were from wcw and all these other companies that they like, who the fuck is Kevin Nash? He was a huge star in WCW. This is a whole new company. It's a whole new TV show. This doesn't, this company doesn't do that. Even if you don't know who Johnny, John Morrison or Johnny Nitro was, they do such a good job of like, well, he's a Hollywood star, Johnny Mundo. Bam. You got it. That's all you really need to know. I don't even think it's that. It's the fact that there, there's no downtime. And when you watch all these mm-hmm. other shows, there's so much like... I think this is a big thing. There are rarely ring entrances, like with like someone playing their music and like walking down. Also, it's such a small studio location that they're doing. Even when they do do that, speaking of doo doo, Chavo had that this episode. It still only will take a total of maybe 20 seconds tops. It's so compact and there's no fat to be trimmed. I think that's the issue with this being so good yes it's an issue guys yeah how dare they be this good oh my gosh i can't wait till we're gonna i'm trying to, i'm gonna make a compilation of just like the longest entrances in the history of ever we're gonna watch we're gonna watch john moxley walk his way to the ring to two whole verses of wild thing as covered by x Ugh. and it's great and it's amazing and nothing happens and it's beautiful i would have set the place on fire yeah. Actually, first I, I would have I would have left the arena. I'm guessing it's at an arena. Uh huh. Got in like really thick metal bars. Closed all the doors. Put metal bars inside so you, they can't be opened up. Like where the 
the thing mm-hmm. is, and then I'll get on the loudspeaker and kind of like Sonic did in Sonic for Hire, like season four because of the Cash Time Explosion movie. I'll go up on the screen and be like, uh-huh. this is your fault, John Moxley. <laughs> and then I will explode the radiator in the arena. Cool. I that's a that sounds like a crime. Nah. All right, then. I saw a Sonic do it to <laughs> Tails. It's fine. Sonic is... Is Tails the Chavo of the Sonic universe? No, it's Sonic. Or, oh, do you mean Sonic, Sonic is the in... Chavo, Chavo in of In Sonic the... for a Hire, absolutely. Or Knuckles is frying and buying. Did he really... Wait, is that like... Did Sonic really kill Tails in a radiation explosion? No, they shot into space. And then oh, this, okay. the fifth season is them having to do work for uh, the Star Fox crew. Wait, like Star Fox, Star Fox? Yeah. Like Fox McCloud? Yeah. What the fuck? Wait, what? Have you never seen Sonic for Hire? No. Is it a cartoon? Yeah, it's super good. It's on YouTube by Lowbrow Studios. Hey, friends of the podcast network, Lowbrow Studios. Okay. It's a, so it's a fan cartoon. Yes, but was, okay. in quotes, okayed by at least Sega. That's, okay, because I'm like sitting here, I'm, I was thinking it's like the Jaleel White era of Sonic cartoons. No. Which would have been insane to just all of a sudden Nintendo and Star, and Sonic are hanging out. Like, it's all cool. Like, they didn't try to murder each other at the Olympic Games. No, and then Slippy's there and says... No barrel roll, and then uh, that other and then guy's Peppy like, "Peppy fucking kicks the shit out of Slippy for stealing his one line." Uh, yeah, that's what ends up happening. How, yeah, he kicks the shit out of Slippy. Like, how fucking dare you? I've got one line. I have to deal with. You see how fucking sexy Falco is? I ain't doing that. I'm uh-huh. an old man. I got one thing, and you're trying to steal that from me, Slippy Toad. I'll fucking kill you to a radiator. Fans of Mostly Speaking Sentai will probably be like, "James, stop bringing this up." But Stacy Silva. From Has the got jank. it going, Anva. Uh, no, from the jank and then also does work for Lowbrow Studios. Has the greatest fucking line read as said, but in the world, the best line and the best reading of it in season eight or season seven of Sonic for Hire. It's near the end of it. It's so good. Sean, watch, I don't know, It's it's each season's like 20 minutes long. Watch three hours of content to get to that point, and you'll be like, holy shit, this was amazing. All right. But before I do that, I have to not watch the dark match from this uh, from this episode. Episode 8, Season 1 of Lucha Underground, A Unique Opportunity. Dark match featuring Cage beating El Mariachi Loco. We have not seen Cage wrestle yet. I am excited. Because he's wrestling at my... I'm excited to see El Mariachi Loco finally on. He's Spoilers, he is on this episode. But he's been, like, in all of our dark matches. Wait, hold on. He's good at warm-up, just like you would be for the Ellen show. Be amazing, and all I want to do is work for Ellen. I hear she's really nice, and she loves to dance. I'm, I should have looked this up before. I am so sorry. It just clicked to me, because we've seen El Mariachi Loco all over, like, the pre-shows. I mean, we haven't seen. Oh, we haven't seen. We've heard. We've gathered whiff. We've read. Uh, we've read. Mariachi Loco. Okay, we don't, we don't have any. Okay. Uh, for a second, I thought he was Rick, he was Ricky Mandel. Okay. But we have a recap. Just from last week, Cueto has the key again. Mundo has his violence and his money. And don't forget, Johnny Mundo kicked the shit out of Big Rick and the nuts on a ladder. Yeah, and then punched that dude. His eyes all wonky now. Yeah, he's got the, he's got the black eye and he's got the uh, the uh, sunglasses. Uh huh. To also hide his cocaine use. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. James, I talked very quickly over you grabbing your notebook to read what I bet was going to be a killer note. I can only apologize. Uh, No, I'm just like really glad and you kind of broke conventions and stereotypes because I did say, Sean, please go on some six minute tangent on Ricky Mandel. (laughs) That led to nothing. (laughs) That absolutely led to nothing. I I really thought I was like, wait, hold on, El Mariachi Loco. Who else is this guy? Oh no, he's just El Mariachi Loco. Shit, okay. I truly thought you'd be like, Ricky Mandel is the Norman Smiley of our generation. Nah, I would never. How dare you? Norman Smiley is still our Norman Smiley of this generation. Uh, No one will ever carry that sweet, sweet mantle of his. I actually messed up. It was supposed to be, Sean, please, Matthew Perry's go on some six-minute tangent on Ricky Mandel. 
Anyway, the recap is over. The show opens up. There are 10 luchadores in this ring. It is Phoenix. It is Penta. It is King Cuerno, Drago, Big Rick, Superfly, Prince Puma, Son of Havoc, Mariachi Loco, all caps locks, my man. I don't know why I was so excited about Mary. Maybe Mariachi Loco is my new Norman Smiley. I was very excited about him when I took these notes. Uh, Mascarita Sa and Mascarita Sangrada. They're all standing around the ring and they look confused. I am confused. Let's fucking go. ILM am confused. I uh, C L L M M M confused. What am I doing? This might be this might be my worst episode of the podcast. My mouth flew away from my brain and I don't know when it's coming back. Sean, we got to do it. We got to do it. We normally do this every single before each recording. Zip. Mariachi Loco. Zap. Mariachi Loco. Zop. Superfly, baby. Okay, I'm back. All right, there we go. Puma with the taped ribs. Fucking, I, I don't know what it is about taped ribs. I love that look. I think it's, oh, maybe just a big old DDP fan. But it's like when I see a wrestler, it's like, oh, it's it's my middle section that's all hurt. I got to tape it all up. It just looks, if I have it, like, oh, it's just such a fucking badass, battled, scarred, Goku-style action figure look, and I love it. Taped ribs. I want to see some gaped libs. Yeah. The liberals are getting fucked this midterm election. And I'm excited about it because that means I'm getting fucked. I will never pause to let James insert a, a statement ever again. Yellow. <laughs> uh, well, Quato comes out of his office as all 10 men stand on the ring. He's as mentioned, he's got the bruised eye. He's got the sunglasses. I love it. As soon as he steps out, he's getting and he get he get and he gets the ring announcement. The ring announcer is announces like, ladies and gentlemen, Dario Cueto, and everybody boos. And he just comes out big old, thank you, I love you too. And I oh, I loved I loved it. I loved how he just like how he just rolled around in the booze like a pig in some delicious delicious hate slop. Ooh. Sean, we should start getting booze and we can live with that. Like if what if on Twitch, oh, James, don't you worry. We are getting booze. If on Twitch, like a, a thousand people came in and just started saying you suck. Yeah, I think that's I, that happens actually a lot. It's usually a problem. See, I, it's usually followed immediately afterwards by hate speech. Oh, yeah. But in this situation, they're just saying you suck. An easy thing to do. Click that 60 second ad. You get in some money, baby, because that's a thousand people watching that ad. For a true. I feel like actually Twitch is a good place. I don't know. I think I feel like how we play games because neither of us are like super like pro gamers. We fuck up a lot. And but I think people enjoy that. I think people enjoy watching us fuck up. I think it's funny. Well, no, people come in and say, oh, you like the Bills? Fuck you. No one has ever said that to me. And I doubt anyone has ever said that to you. You don't even watch football. And they're like, Buffalo sucks, man. No Boo. one says this to me. You, have you ever seen my stream? Everyone's very polite and lovely until I do something stupid. And then they all laugh and they point. And then they say the Bills suck. Buffalo's stupid. Oh, my God, you were right this whole time. Uh -huh. I blocked it out of my memory because it hurt too bad. Good God. And they say Grisildia isn't our generation's All right, Wu-Tang. You calm the fuck down. Because they're actually good. You're... Oh, my God. <laughs> Psycho Gorman is an overrated piece of trash. Whoa! Cueto announces with his bruised eye and his sunglasses there's going to be a 10-way match. Machete approves. And then another uh, different... 10-way match, but just as 10-way as the last 10-way match is going to happen later tonight. What? And the winners of those two 10-way matches, which are different, but both 10-ways, are going to get something. An opportunity. Yeah, not money. He clarifies it's definitely not money, but it's definitely a prize of sorts. Maybe the director's cut of Vampiro Night Warrior? One can only hope. A prize of sorts? Well, I'm a guy of jorts. I love wearing jean shorts. Mm, make your calves look fine and your calves look fine. Hey, I don't need that. The Wait, wait, that's a joke I have later. Never mind. Keep going. Okay. So the bell rings. We get this match. And I kind of like, like, at this point, do you, uh, it's weird. Like, part of it's like, I could kind of expect what's going on, but we don't know anything. But the show's been so shrouded in mystery so far. I'm along for the ride at this point. Mm-hmm. And how, how do you feel? Like, because we don't, we don't have anything to go on. 
just we have two 10-way matches and something's going to happen. I thought at the end it was going to be these two against Cage to introduce him. That would have been cool. Yeah, but it's something different. Are you ready to start this match? Oh, yeah. The bell rings and everybody jumps Rick. Because oh, yeah. Rick is a big fucking dude. I hope he got hazardous pay for this match because there is a time when... You know, in a lot of fantasy movies, there'll be a time when there's a troll or a dragon and it's just a whole group of people with spears stabbing it, hoping to like draw enough blood that they pass out. That's what was happening in this ring with Big Rick. Yeah, which to be fair, you kind of you kind of have to. He's a very he's a very large individual. Big is not just a name. It is also an apt adjective. And like, so like, yeah, everybody jumps the fuck out of Big Rick. I hope he gets hazard pay as well, because he, he's multiple times has to get dumped out of the ring. Uh, eventually he throws, he, he does, he, he throws everyone off, thing from uh, Fantastic Four style, except for Masquerita Sangrada, who has a beautiful Wiley e. Coyote style moment of just like, everyone gets thrown off but him, and then he slowly like looks up, mm -hmm. sees that he's the only one still fighting Big Rick. And just says, fuck it, let's go. And just like, and just like doubles down, which I loved. I love that. I thought that was as, as far as like, op like just a way to like introduce this match to like open up this story. Something about, something about Big Rick and, Sang and Masquerita and Masquerita just slowly looking up being like, ah, shit, but I'm already here is very exciting to me. And I'm surprised Vampiro hasn't slapped Matt Stryker yet because <laughs> he's laughing at this little person versus a, in quotes, giant man. And he says, I'm laughing, but this is good strategy. And then Vampiro says, I wouldn't laugh. <laughs> Vampiro's going to murder Mad Striker, and I can't wait. Uh, I I firmly agree with this decision. I don't know. I'm not as hard on Matt Striker this week. I think I've been broken by Matt Striker's shitty 2014. Mm -hmm. high, I, I don't I don't think he has blonde highlights, but he sounds like a person who should have blonde highlights. He also says like, oh man, hitting the chest, messing up that baby heart of his. And it's like, dude. Oh, I have it. It's at, the official quote is collapses his little baby baboon heart. Wow, excuse me. Excuse me. You can't just you can't just put words together and think they're going to make a sentence. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Collapses his little baby baboon heart. Excuse me. I was not. I'm laughing, uh, but it's, you know what? It's a good strategy. Oh uh, yeah, as a, to to get heat, it's a very good strategy. He collapses his little baby baboon heart. Oh, Penta's is on the apron. There's some great fucking matches. I think I'm really excited about Penta. I think in this match was a big highlight for me. Specifically, Penta basing. Penta just like being like being the base for certain uh, top rope maneuvers. The first one I wrote, uh, it was Penta. Th Penta ends up throwing Drago over the top rope to like a missile corkscrew on like I think two or three guys on the outside. The height Penta gets to this guy, like he throw, he miss, he looks like a missile going through the air. It's fucking insane. And then the second one, Penta's okay. So Penta's on the apron and on his back. He's on the he like he's on the ground. He's on his back. Masquerita runs at Penta, who I used to do this with my dad, where he like you put your you put uh they put their feet on your hip flexors while they're on their back, and you it's called like a Superman. Do you ever, you ever used to do this? Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's a very fun move. We also did this in like uh in like movement in movement class in uh, acting school. So you learn. I don't know what that taught us in acting school, but we learned how to do it. It's a very cool move that Penta ends up doing to a running Masquerita, launches him into a monkey flip into like two or three or no into Cuerno, who catches him beautifully. It's a it's a marvelous spot. And yeah, again, yeah. to to do it on a running Masquerita. And so seamlessly, so fucking like Penta. Penta is what Pen, I was excited about Penta because again, I don't think Penta didn't get a lot of big, big stuff in, but he was such a solid base for so many exciting, exciting, exciting fucking moves. Rice is my favorite base. Wait, wait race? Rice. Rice. Thank you. Okay. I was I was really concerned for a second. No, I, I didn't know what it meant, but it sounded terrible. You go to a uh, rice, an rice. Asian buffet, make the rice your base, and then topple everything else on it. 
Fuck it, throw a pizza on top of it too. Yeah, pizza rice, baby. Uh, oh, we also get. Damn. We also get some more uh, machete lore from Sean, Vampiro. Real yes. quick. Sure. Pizza rice would be pretty good. I don't think I understand. You, it's rice, and then you throw like the pizza sauce. Some sausage, some uh, all the condiments that you'd put in pizza and like mix that up. And it's kind of like a stir fry, but pizza style. Okay, so there's no dough. No, no, no dough. The rice okay. is the dough. I might be on board. I'm, I guess, hmm. I'm, I'm curious how you cook it because I'd be afraid of burning the rice. Like you cook, because I imagine you have to cook the rice before you put the toppings on, but then you still have to cook the pizza or else you're going to have cold sauce. And if you bring me a, you bring me a cold sauce pizza, I say get this Lunchable shit out of here before I, I, before I chomp down on your baby baboon heart. You just cook it like fried rice. Oh, then yeah, that sounds good. Okay, there we go. <laughs> the only thing you would want to put on last is the cheese. Okay. I have no transition for this, but I do love the new lore we get from Vampiro. Uh, machete don't text, but he watches Lucha Underground. Hey, Sean, Machete, Machete doesn't listen to Sweaty Time Pro Wrestling because no one does. That's true. Everybody go text Machete and let him know we're, we're covering this episode that features him heavily. Okay, I did because last week you were like... You texted Machete? No, no, no. Uh, yeah, Aww. I mean, I did, but I didn't want to tell you. I mean, I texted... That's fair. I couldn't handle it. My little baby baboon heart would get too excited. I did text the man whose name I cannot say for it is copyrighted. Uh, <laughs> Machete, of course. So uh, last week you were like, they're not even like giving the release date of the movie or how to to view it. And I go, well, yeah, yeah because it came out in like 2010 and you were freaking out. I <laughs> will say <laughs> Machete 2 came out in 2013. Okay. So... <laughs> Still like a year ago. It'd be very funny if it was like January 3rd of 2013. And then it's like, we're almost two years away from that, guys. <laughs> it's so like, it's nothing wrong with it. It's just like, you should probably call him Danny Trejo at least once. I will say during this time, people love just say, because it's a nice, it's a nice word to say machete. Yeah. It's still weird. Like, I don't know. It's so odd to like, like he's an actor who's done this role twice. And like, and it's, a, and it's weird, I guess, today because Machete, I feel like it got a lot of hype, but it, and it was, it was successful, but it wasn't like birth of a franchise successful, you know? Sean, I, I understand why he's here now. Is there a Machete 3? No, Robert Rodriguez, who started the El Rey Network, directed those movies. No, yeah, but those movies haven't been out in a year. It's still... <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, but yeah, Machete is here, and he's, and he's having a good time. We also get a, a few... Like, and it's, like it's a 10-way match. First pinfall wins. Everybody's getting their shit. Everybody gets their shit. Even, even fucking Mariachi Loco gets his shit in. Everybody gets to do cool stuff. Superfly hits an HBK moonsault on Penta in front of Machete, who stands up with a big smile. Like he's going to ask anyone if they need help. Like I'm in love with, like not just Machete being here, but how positive he is the entire time. Like I just, he's, he's just having a ball and good. He deserves it. I didn't know Robert Rodriguez was behind the Spy Kids movies. Robert Rodriguez is awesome. And the faculty in Sin City. I don't think I knew he was in Sin City. I didn't think he knew he was involved with Sin City. I yeah, he he directed it. Damn. Robert Rodriguez is awesome. Yeah, guys, check him out. Giving us so many things. If you love Spy Kids, watch Lucha Underground. I promise you. Did he kind of mishandle the L. Ray network? Yeah, but... Sure, sure did. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I will say every single streaming service that started in like the 2014 kind of era was mishandled look at CISO look at all of them that came yeah. from there besides the ones that had I mean uh, CISO was a different beast because they should have just done what Peacock did why the fuck did you say hey we know what to do let's look at maybe 30 percent of the shit we own just comedy opposed to everything else as well and let's just do comedy focused it's weird and this, i think the thing that hurts me so much about el rey 
is like it was business wise handled so poorly. But and the same with Cecil. There were so many good ideas. in Oh, there. yeah. Like bringing up over all the Shaw movies and having Riza do like little introductions for like primetime, like in the primetime movie slot. Like, hey, here's a little cool trivia about this movie mm-hmm. is so fucking nice. Lucha Underground is so fucking cool. There's a couple of other shows on there. that Explosion were really, Jones. Explosion Jones. Like there was it was such a good idea in El Rey that you just needed someone who understood how to run a TV network because obviously that's a very different beast than uh, directing a movie. It's, it's one of those like if you just had that person who like what had zero creative input but just knew how to run a business that would have been and was like trustworthy. Because that person does also, there's a very good chance, just ends up taking all your money and uh, fleeing the country to Canada. But, like, if, if you just had that person who doesn't take your money and flee to Canada and helps you run... Oh, I would, El Rey was dope. I miss El Rey. And uh, Michete is also dope. And he just wants to help these sweet, sweet luchadors get their good shit in. As long as he doesn't have to text while doing it. Because, mm, yeah, Michete don't text, but he watches Lucha Underground. Speaking of him, I forgot who... It was like this huge spin flip onto someone outside of the ring and punctuated it perfectly with a high five to Danny Trejo. I, I'm getting there. Okay. Yeah, it was a Puma spot. It's so f- oh, fuck. Hell yeah. Yes. Fuck yes. Real quick. Well, I also want to shout out Son of Havoc, who, and I like this in the story. Everyone but Big Rick is a pretty well versed high flying luchador. So, like, everyone's doing dives to the outside. And Son of Havoc, who we remember as being a piece of trash uh, built from the open road. He hates women. He hates little people. He's just a piece of... He, he hangs out with Evil Lise and they have sex, which is pretty cool. But otherwise, he's a piece of shit. And so he, he goes, he, he runs for the dive and he fakes it and immediately just flips off the whole crowd. Where it's like... <laughs> which, I, which I love. It's, but, like, yeah, that's a great little piece of like how much of a pre- piece of trash this guy is. It's a 10-way... Every, you have to do a big move to sort of like get the win. And even even then he recognizes the crowd will like it if he does a big move. Fuck you people. Mm-hmm. I, I want to win, but I don't want to please you because I hate every single one of you, you motherfuckers. Which that actually segues perfectly into you were saying like he's a piece of shit at all these things. Hey, him and Evil East do have sex, so that's cool. No, he's also a selfish lover. You think he's a selfish lover? Yeah, he just he's all focused on him coming or he is so selfless that it becomes selfish. Like, oh, I'm only I'm tantric. I'm not I'm never going to show you me having pleasure. I'm all about you. And then eventually uh, that starts to wear down of like, well, can I even please this individual? Yeah, it's that weird. Let me hold the door open for you. I'm 10 feet away. This is awkward. And now I have to jog. You're making you by you putting me first makes me feel uncomfortable. Well, in that situation where like, hey, let me open the door for you. And it ends with the person getting opened. The door comes. Then it's a perfect one to one. Yeah. And even if it's not. I'm changing the subject. Ooh. Puma slides in. After Machete says the cop, fuck you, I'm not doing cool shit. Puma slides in, and I, I just have does some crazy Puma shit. This dude is so good. Like, th- he just goes on a string of offense on, uh, on Son of Havoc that looks amazing. And that sequence ends with the spot we were talking about before. Puma hits a tope over the top rope on, like, two dudes on Penta and Superfly lands on his feet like a like a perfect 10 point landing like an absolute stud immediately high fives machete who is right there and then walks off cool guy no look explosion style Mm -hmm. and machete immediately stands up and gives him a standing ovation he's like this dude as he deserved that dude that shit looked so cool and again, all of it just landed the way all of it was just perfect. Like he landed perfectly. Didn't take a step. Didn't have to like do a little jog after he landed. No, landed directly on his feet in perfect high five positioning, hits that high five and then just walks off like, oh, my God, this man is Puma is a fucking treasure trove of just brilliant like it's yeah he had a nice string of offense in this but you want to know who also had a great string of offense who had a great string of offense also yoko kishi bojin 
from Urgeis, God bless the ring, she fought with a literal string of offense. It was a yo-yo. Oh, okay. That's the game that had Cloud Strife as a fighter. Yeah, uh uh-huh. Okay. That's, I think I know about it because of Austin Eruption videos. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, great. So all of our Austin Eruption fans, get on board, baby. I know it from renting it multiple times and also the regret I have of just not keeping the disc because it's very expensive now, I think. Yeah, I think that, yeah, it sounds like, it's gotta be weird. PS1? Because it's a Squaresoft fighting game, right? Yeah, and it was, it's not fun. Okay. Rare ga- I would say expensive games are ne- are very rarely good games. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, it was a re- we had a feeling when we were making this that nobody wanted our bullshit. Okay, d- just the disc only is only 30 bucks, so that's not bad. But if you want a full one, it's $100. Honestly, for PS1 games, that's not, that's not the worst. That's like, it's in the upper echelon of expensive stuff. Yeah, but I like s- it's low. It's low in that upper echelon. I sold a Silent Hill that I found in the trash for one hundred and eighty dollars last year. Yeah, but Silent Hill's a good game. Jump in Shadow Tower. I got to sell that because boy, oh boy, it's it's very scary and also it sucks because it's a FromSoft game. Wait, I like FromSoft. Oh man, I th- I feel like most of the world likes FromSoft. Two it, thumbs Oldenbury down. Did very well. For all, for the entire company? Yeah, because they're like, hey, you, you want to hate yourself while playing something? We're the company for you. I'm probably going to play Dark Souls after this. I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm not even lying. I, I reloaded up Dark Souls a couple days ago because I'm like, I already beat it off stream. Maybe I'll beat it on stream. It's just a fun game. Just do what cool people do in cut, dude. Wait, what? I'm saying. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my god, my brain refused My brain uh, refused to allow me to get that Because it was such a fucking Oh my god Yeah, it's dark, but so is Dark Souls But at least that's in the name Okay, well I can't, I can't with you Call me Darkland Monster now I am so shaken Not (laughs) stirred (laughs) Uh, Dark Souls is a great game uh, big Rick lies out the whole the whole world. This is like a bunch of yeah. A big part of the story is everyone gets their cool shit in, but it's not enough to keep Big Rick down for long. Big Rick comes back in, lays everyone out. Then everyone gets their cool shit in, like double team style. Everyone has to start double teaming Big Rick. It's still like, but he's still an absolute menace. Mm-hmm. We have a Tower of Doom superplex. Looked fucking great. Then we, we're starting to get to the to the end here. Son of Havoc shooting stars Phoenix. Then Superfly comes in and Moonsault, Son of Havoc. Then Drago hits his dragon tail, which is that springboard arm drag. I love that name. Uh Uh-huh. Springboard arm drag into the seatbelt pin, Superfly. Then Cuerno throws on the the hunt, Drago. Then El Mariachi Loco, Super Kicks, Cuerno. Like, everyone just, like, it's it's that rapid bop, 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 bop. Everyone does their shit. El Mariachi Loco gets his shit in, which... I feel like this style of match kind of gets overlooked right now because it's very popular, especially on indie shows. Like we have a bunch of people. We don't have we can't put everyone in a match. We'll get, get everyone into a scramble. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this is done so professionally and so cleanly. Like I I, I mean, there's, there's 10, I think, quality workers. That's just like and nobody looks like they're out of his place. Nobody looks like they're kind of just standing around waiting for their next mm-hmm. shit. And all the moves that they do hit. I so again, I cannot put over how great Penta fl- monkey flipping Masquerita or Puma landing on his feet and high fiving uh, Machete so crisp. Yeah, th- again, like last week, I'm like, oh man, we got a, another shit match, or like, oh this this ladder match is 20 minutes long. I'm going to hate this. I thought the same thing about these 10 men matches, but I'm like, shit, these are fucking great. Yeah, it's something that, like, again, and again, if you watch a lot of wrestling, it's not even, like, indies. Like, you'll see it on TV where, they're, like, they put a bunch of people together. I remember, I think I think we were watching the Royal Rumble. I sent you a Royal Rumble. Yeah. Because uh, no, from what I hear, people are like, oh, yeah, it's a great way to introduce someone who's not deep into wrestling into wrestling. And you really were not about it. Nope, not at all, because it was boring. It's boring and, like, and chaotic, chaotic in a boring way. Mm-hmm. Where there's, like, there's a lot happening. There's so much happening. There's no time for any story or anything. And I I think that's probably what would have happened in the, the next match that is pretty much a Royal Rumble minus people coming into the ring every minute. 
if it had been longer, it would have started being like, wow, that w it's just like a bunch of people uh, exhausted trying to punch each other. But since it was maybe a 15 minute or less match, it's just like, boom, 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 done. Yeah. Uh, so well, let's get to this next match by finishing up this one. Ends with uh, Phoenix hitting Puma with a Fire Thunder driver for the win at 10 minutes and 49 seconds. And the post-match, Cuerdo is still pointing at Drago. Which is like, match, match is over. Put your finger down. <laughs> Cuerdo's like, no, no. But, 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 but that's what I'm talking about, like where there's still Masqueritas getting stuff in, especially that stuff with Big Rick at the beginning. Cuerdo and Drago are continuing their feud. Like they they have very personal beef. Where like this, it very easily could be just like big, exciting, but filler. No, these guys are a prof a like skilled and professional and like just very, very good enough, skilled and talented enough to make this match not just clean but push stories forward. And I fucking I love this match. This match is great. Uh huh. Uh huh. And then we get Brian Cage is on a mission. Yeah. We got a video package. Brian Cage has a mallet. He's got a tire. He's got some robes, and he's got no. And he's got all that cage without a shirt on that we paid to see. This man looks good without his shirt. What did you think about this promo package? We talked about Brian Cage last week as well. We wanted to see a little bit more for, of him, more from him, I should say. Well, just like Cage, I too have pushed myself to the brink of evolution. Because I can survive off from four hot dogs and two cans of beans a day. That can't be evolution. Yeah. That cannot be what we are, as a people are going towards. Yeah, baby. I know. I see your muscle flexing at me. I know you're in better, better shape than I am. I just refuse to believe it based on your diet and lifestyle choices. I will say this. I... I think I'm addicted to beans now because at nighttime, I'm like, James, you, you cannot eat another can of beans. And then I, I look oh, at the pizza. Boy. I look at the pizza rolls and I go, yeah, but that's breading. That's going to like make me feel all sluggish. And then I say, I guess it's beans again. Oh, my God. Brian Cage is on a mission. Uh, he says he's, he proves putting limits on yourself is admitting defeat only person putting obstacles in your way is you. He is the self-help machine. I, it was very, I got, it was very self-helpy to me. His whole thing here talks about, like you mentioned in your, uh, in your exp exposition on beans, that he is pushing himself to the brink of evolution. He is proof that anything is possible. He is not a man. He is a machine. They call me Cage. Ooh. Do you feel any more excited about Brian Cage than you did last week? Well, if he had been in the last match, I would have been like, yeah, I'm set up. But no, mm -hmm. I don't now. Yeah. I mean, and just because I think we've seen I thought I thought Penta's promo package. It's weird because I guess we saw Penta already wrestle. But I think like promo packages we've seen without the wrestler wrestling that like we got excited for Puma, I guess. Because, like, we like the Puma packages, right? Yeah. I'm not commenting on James trying to do a funny shirt bit. Okay. <laughs> I was like, did you not see the monitors? What the fuck can we... <laughs> this is a podcast, James. We don't release video footage. Yeah, but you could have said, like, wow, James currently is sensually unbuttoning his shirt, which he's wearing a button-up shirt because it's close to Laundry Day, a.k.a. it should have been Laundry Day weeks ago. Why would I say 80 of that? I don't know. All right. Because you're my bud. Sure. Way to take off your shirt seductively, I suppose. I didn't take it off. It's still on. There's still multiple buttons to be seen here. I fuck it. I, I swear to God, I'm going to punch you in your baby baboon heart. But you not commenting on it made me feel like uh, gross. I know. And then I and then I could feel you feeling gross. And I'm <laughs> just sitting here being like, God damn it, James. Let's just do the podcast. Let's do it, baby. All right. You last note. trying to note. show me your baby baboon heart. My last note is goddamn right you better be doing that, guy. What? We haven't gotten to the last match, so I don't want to spoil anything. Goddamn right you better be doing that right, guy. That's the note? Yeah. About the last match? It's not. I was just making something up. Oh, Okay, well, what, what do you, what's your last note on Brian Cage? Oh, He's no, I meant, like, I meant my last note of the day of like, hey, let's do this podcast and get oh it over with. James! James! Keep your shirt on 
and fucking do this podcast with me. Sean, how come, like, I've discussed it with you before, the pop filter, the windscreen doesn't do anything if it's, like, on the microphone. Oh, my bad. Let me pop it off a little bit. I got very excited by how mad I was with you. Okay, it's been like that for like three weeks, so don't blame oh. it on me. Okay, then I don't fucking know. I can tell in the record that it's close to it because all your peas are popping like pussy. Pop that pussy like this. So yeah, Brian Cage is coming next week. We have Conan and Puma in the bathroom mirror. Kay's laying out. Kay's laying into Puma about how he had an opportunity and he blew it. Fuck you, you stupid cat. You shit in a box, baby. Wolfpack for life. That's what Conan says to Puma. He's very angry with him. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. Would you be this angry at Puma if he lost? Absolutely not. He tried. And he he got, he high-fived Machete. When's the last time Conan high-fived Machete? Something I'd like to know. Uh Uh-huh, probably never. Conan never fucking high five Machete. That dude doesn't even text, but he watches Lucha Underground. He sure does. And he high fives Prince Puma, baby. He's like, yeah, uh, I'll come to to this event, Ro- Robert Rodriguez, seeing as, you know, you've put me in all your movies. Literally all of them, I think. Probably. Hell yeah. Spy Kids would be spy nothing without Danny Trejo. Conan eventually puts like an aggressive hand on Puma's shoulder, which he shakes off, but does nod solemnly because he respects legends. Mm-hmm. That was a very interesting like character choice. Like, as Puma's getting yelled at, he shakes off, like, hey, don't you fucking touch me, but I'm listening to what you're saying. He pulls a Tom Green, don't touch my shoulder! Yeah. (laughs) Puma might be Tom Green. We can't tell. He's wearing a mask. Ooh, could be. Yo, Tom Green fucking jacked to the gills. No, I think Cuerno is Tom Green because he's, like, wearing a dead animal. That's true. And I'm I'm pretty sure he does a barrel roll when he hits that uh, death arrow. He doesn't, actually. He just, fuck, I love that. I just love that death arrow that Cuerno hits. What does the barrel roll thing have to do with Tom Green? There's an episode of the Tom Green show during one of the call-in segments, and someone's just like, hey, Tom, do a barrel roll. <laughs> it's when the meme was real popular. And, like, it go, they go back for, like, over a minute back and forth of Tom just asking, a uh, barrel roll? Yeah, barrel roll. A uh, barrel roll? Yeah, do a barrel roll. Is this his internet show or the to- MTV's The Tom Green Show? I think it was MTV because it's. When would that meme have been relevant? I think it was during the TV show. Oh, uh, well, no. Memes wouldn't have been anything back then. That was like late 90s. Oh, then yeah, I guess it was the internet show. Because I'm pretty sure it was set up to have call ins on that, but not on The Tom Green Show. Oh, okay. Then on, the, then on Tom Green f- has sex with the internet, the oh. internet show. Conan ends this little bathroom segment with uh, Puma with one day these opportunities will be gone and so will I. What the fuck? Conan, are you going back to TNA? Don't do it. Three live crew ain't never coming back. It was too beautiful for this world. I say that to Nicole all the time of... uh, Nicole, don't join TNA. We beg of you. Well, no, I say to Nicole, I'm like, well, someday I might not be here. And then Nicole's like, Jesus, stop (laughs) discussing your mortality. Like on Mostly Speaking Sentai last week, Melzer was on. And I kept bringing up how it was vascular. And I was like, man, when the day I finally decide to kill myself, it's going to be so easy to find a vein to shoot that H in. Jesus. (laughs) Jesus. <laughs> That's Nicole's reaction. Oh my God. And then Melzer was like, yeah, I, I forgot how to do this show again, guys. Yeah. That's what you're... We have a nine-way match coming up next. Uh-huh. Because, oh, I, I'm counting this person, this person, this person. That's just well, nine. It's Mil Muertes, Sexy Star, Cortez Castro, Mr. Cisco, Pimpinella Escarlata, Bale. Who the fuck is Bale? Shot, uh, we have Famous B, Ricky Mandel, and the only guy to get an entrance, Johnny Mundo. Uh, oh, excuse me, it's not a nine-way match, it's a nine-way battle royale, over-the-top mm-hmm. style. And excuse me again, it is a ten-way match, as Chavo makes his entrance, Big Booze. Uh-huh. Except from Machete, who applauds. Machete's heart is too pure for this world, Everyone around the globe hates Chavo. We hate Chavo. Vampiro kind of hates Chavo. Mad Striker certainly hates Chavo. The country of Mexico hates Chavo. The one person who doesn't is Machete. Mm-hmm. And I love, he's just so happy to see, he's just so happy to see him. 
Last week we were like, oh, who's he rooting for, Chavo or whoever else he was matching? He would have been on the Chavo side. He's rooting for everyone, really. Oh, yeah. Like, he's just, like, like he kind of turns around. It's like, hey, why is everyone booing? This fucking Chavo, guys. Smackdown 6. So, yeah, he's like, we have nine people. And then who's number 10? Oh, more like number Ooh. two, Chavo Guerrero. Take a dump in your heart. And then we find out Vampiro says, oh, he's public enemy number one. More like public restroom number two. <laughs> How many of these do you... I feel like you have an entire notebook somewhere of just, I'm going to shit on Chavo jokes. More, I'm going to shit on Chavo. No, I'm going to shit in his bag. This is true. Uh, does he... Chavo, does, you know what? Chavo doesn't even make it to the ring before a sexy star dives on his ass. Sexy. Bell rings. Let's get it on Marvin Gaye style. I'm fucking... Oh, we're going to get it on, baby. And we've got 20 minutes to talk about two matches. I... We, we'll be all right. I love that Vamp- and Vampiro is in love with the mysterious leather mama who appears, which is interesting. We've seen, I don't think, because I think we've only seen her for Cuerdo and Drago matches, who neither of them are in this match. The uh, mysterious leather mama who hangs out above Cuerdo's office, Cueto's office. I'm very confused by this woman. Yeah, they're kind of hyping her a little too long. We need to figure out at least what she's doing here or who sent her. Something needs to be said instead of just her being horny fodder for the commentators. I mean, I guess the thing I'm digging most about it is that it's not for Cuerdo and Drago, who is what. So, like, to me, I'm excited because I got a new little piece of lore. Like how I was excited to learn that Machete does not text. He just watches Lucha Underground. Yeah. I'm excited to know like, oh, okay. So she is, she's independent. She's not working with anyone. It's weird. By finding out that I know less is like, it's, it's a new clue. It's like, at least I can like cross out. Okay. So she's not working for Cuerno. She's not working with Drago. So like, I know less, but in a way I feel like I know I can eliminate more options. Well, also obviously she's independent all professional wrestlers are independent contractors yeah especially fucking oh my god Shin, i don't think uh 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 shinsuke nakamura is working at noah in january which is crazy because he is a wwe contracted superstar it's the first time the wwe is letting someone wrestle outside of the wwe independent contractors baby i shouldn't have brought this up i just got very excited Okay, I'm back. And Noah, as everyone knows, means the National Operation of Wrestling Alliances. What? Hold on now. Yep. Now. Famous B gets the lady first, running into, uh, after Pimpy uh, runs a clothesline slash slab to his face. It looks so stiff. And then immediately afterwards, Cisco and Castro eliminate Mandel. This, I feel like they might have like top loaded that first match a little too much. Compared to this match, where it's like, oh yeah, and then there's, like, Famous B and Ricky Mandel are fine, but, like, you really only, like, as far as, like, real, like, at this point, we're expecting, like, amazing Lucha-style matches, like, real athleticism, and, like, tight storytelling, and I feel like they put all those guys in the first match. Like, we have Mill, we got, we got Johnny, Pimpy's a legend, but can't necessarily go like they used to. Like they're a little, well, they're a little older. They're a little uh, stiffer. I think it makes they... sense, though. How so? What the fuck are you talking about? You would much rather in a scenario where a match could literally go on as long as you could have it go on, because the first match, someone needs to pin someone in order for it to stop. But this is like you go over the top rope, you're you are eliminated. So if I am someone of top caliber. It would make more sense to put me in the first match where it's just like, we need people to go nonstop opposed to, hey, we need some jobbers in here to get out really early. I guess that's true. I agree. Mill breaks up Pimpy's assisted top rope spot, eliminates Pimpy. And we're just kind of going. Like, I feel like a lot of these eliminations are coming pretty quick. Sexy Star hates Chavo. Machete has no comment. Chavo's biggest fan. And Chavo dumps Sexy out of the ring elimination style. Uh, don't give that slander to, to Machete himself. Machete loves everyone, including Chavo. Okay, but don't don't be like, he prefers him over everyone else. That's kind of how it came out. 
excuse me, no, Machete is Chavo's biggest fan because he is Chavo's only fan. Okay. Chavo, you piece of shit. How could you do this to blow Damon Jr.? Damn, Chavo's only fan is him just opening up duffel bags and revealing if there's something in there. And Machete gave him three bucks a month because it looks like he needs it. And Machete is the nicest man in the world. Chavo does not look like he needs money. He is fit, he's looking nice, and he's looking healthy. I'm his second fan, guys. Whoa! He were the second fan on the hill all along. Uh-huh, uh-huh. On the grassy knoll. Oh, so I make a joke about cutting, but you can make a joke about a great American president being assassinated by the NSA? Psycho Gorman relies too heavily on his tropes instead of making its own thing. Wowzers. That wasn't even me dogging on something you hold beloved like the <laughs> Buffalo Bills or Grisil. Hey. Or no, actually, I was being hey. nice to Grisildia. Hey. I was being By mean. shitting on the Bills earlier. Yeah, you've been shitting on me all day. You shat on this entire city of Buffalo earlier in this podcast. The fuck you saying with your mouth? I'm just saying Buffalo is at most a third tier United States city. Oh my God! You're from you're from the state of Michigan, which yeah, I'm pretty sure sucks. doesn't even exist anymore. Yeah. It blows. <laughs> after the after the sexy, I like uh, Mad Striker calls that sexy's been eliminated, and Vampiro has none of it. Immediately just comes in like sexy has not been eliminated. She comes back. How dare you, Mad Striker? You piece of Queens trash. And it's like, no, she no, she did get eliminated. What the fuck are you talk about, Vampiro? Uh, can I say something real quick on Michigan? Uh, you sure. A friend of mine from high school. Oh, I actually talked about him last week when I was, or was, no, that was on a hit it and crit it. When I first mm. went on antidepressants, my friend Jeremy Church was like, James, is something wrong? I was like, my face hurts because I'm actually smiling for once in my life. And it really does hurt. So I think we talked about that on ICP too. It could be, it could be. Yeah. Because yeah. I was like talking about maybe that. a ge geometry class, who knows, but mm -hmm. He took a photo and it went like super viral on Facebook. And it was a photo of, I think it's called Hidden Lake in Muskegon, Michigan. And people are like, wow, it's so beautiful. Oh, man, uh, the nature of Michigan. And I'm like, this fucking sucks, guys. <laughs> Why would you want to look at this? I, I walk in alleyways most of the days. And that shit's more visually appealing than some, oh, my God, an iceberg was here once. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, fuck lakes. Uh -huh, Except for uh -huh. Lake Erie, that shit slaps. Lake Erie is fucking cool as hell, man. You got, you got Blinky the fish from The Simpsons in there. You got Canada. Canada's fucking great. Erie, Indiana, that TV show that was I believe in a, a city on e the Erie. I imagine. I think it's yeah. I think it's Erie. Oh no, it's Indiana. So yeah, probably not. I don't. I, does Lake Erie go to Indiana? Oh wait, no. Indiana is in the middle. So yeah, it would need to be Ohio. So yeah, no. It's just yeah. a spooky place. Yeah, I remember that show. It existing. I remember nothing about it. It might import water from Lake Erie, maybe. Okay. Okay, Erie, Indiana. I see you. I see you. Appreciate good I'm water. Scared. Great taste in water. James is scared. I'm scared of these fucking eliminations after eliminations after eliminations. What I forgot. I, I was trying to buy time to see. <laughs> I forgot where I left off. Oh yeah. Uh Cisco Castro and Bale. Who the fuck is this guy? His name is Bale. He's the third member of Big Rick's crew, I suppose. I I think we might have seen him once before. Probably. This match. And he's been working dark. He's been working the dark matches a bunch. All three of them try to eliminate Mundo, who skins the cat. That, uh, which is like when you, he, you kind of hold onto the top rope as you're getting flipped over and you hold on. Okay, so uh, it's okay to cut a cat, but not your own wrists. Don't cut cats either. You, you have said two. said that they're skinning cats. You are willfully obtuse, and you're lucky you're cute, or I would be pissed. Mm -hmm. That's my shit. All the girls want to be like this. Mad Striker straight up calls it Shawn Michaels getting the cat, and I'm like, bitch, he don't work here? What are you saying? He's, he, like, he calls out the Shawn Michaels skins the cat, which, to be fair, Shawn Michaels is very like well-known for, but he's also still working for... It, it's just... It's very weird to hear on national television references to Shawn Michaels that you might not be able to do. I'm curious. I'm curious if they know, like if WWE noticed if they would have like come for the, come for him for like a fine. Is Shawn Michaels his real name? 
No. Oh, okay. Then it depends on whoever owns the rights to that would be what I would think. Yeah. But even at Shawn Michaels with WWE behind him might be able to come for them for money. That would be oh, so stupid. Enough. Yeah. But also, I, so is calling it Shawn Michaels skinning the cat. Just call it skinning the cat. Other wrestlers have. This is a very popular move. People do this all the time. I don't know. Also, I love Cisco hits a low drop. So Johnny's seated on the apron. Cisco hits a running drop kick to like knock him off the apron. Instead, uh, Johnny hooks his feet on the bottom rope. That was my next note. It's oh, it's so fucking crisp. It's it's, it's one of those things like it's it's wild because all like a lot of the workhorse guys were in the last match, but Johnny's in this match and Johnny not being eliminated is awesome to watch. He's very slippery. He says, "Don't get." eliminated he is he is Takeshita's castle yeah he is the entire he is the castle that Takeshita built is it Takesha Takeshita Takista Takashi's castle Batista yes yeah I walk from my inside this pit of bumbo. see it's a good thing like wrestling when you're like hey you don't need to know anything about other wrestling I can glean that that might be intro music from Batista no, I wrote that. That's that's an original. I was. How, what do you think? I mean, it's no lay down, dog, bad dog. dog. What I like about this podcast is you don't need to listen to any of our other podcasts. <laughs> we never reference old stuff. I did say to Nicole, I was like, "Oh man, sweaty time pro wrestling. Not enough people's listening to it. You know, we make it." difficult for newcomers because <laughs> I have a list of reoccurring jokes to talk about. Shouts out that cloaca. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> There's this beautiful spot. Oh, sorry. Uh, before I jump ahead, eventually, uh, all uh, Johnny, Mill, and Chavo each eliminate one member of the crew. So it's the final three. Chavo, Johnny, Mill Muertes. Beautiful uh, corkscrew dropkick from Chavo. There's a spot. Uh, Mundo's on the apron again. Chavo goes after him. So Chavo's in the ring. He tries to push Johnny off. But Mill comes from behind Chavo, grabs him around the waist. Mundo ends up hitting a sunset flip over both men so that Mill German suplexes Chavo on his head. Very scary landing. And then gets sunset flip bombed by Johnny. It's kind of like that Tower of Doom spot where someone's going in the last match, someone went for a superplex and then Cuerno showed up behind him and power bombed him. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you still get your move off, but I'm also hurting you while you do your move. It was cool. It was very exciting. Fucking Vampiro is all over it. I can't tell who's hornier. Vampiro for that move or a striker for Katarina's outfit. Oh, uh... Are very horny. I would say Katarina because it, it was getting egregious. Striker was very horny, but Vampiro was also was exceptionally horny for that spot. I don't know if we've already passed it, but... One of them says, I believe it's Matt Stryker's like, oh, man, uh, a spear isn't that like cool of a thing. Like you could do something so much more powerful. And then Vampiro says a spear is a spear, whether it's in wrestling, a pickle or pop stars. I did not catch that. That's the best thing I've ever heard in my life. Oh, thank you. I wrote that, <laughs> not him. Yo, you crushed that. You're the best head writer for Lucha Underground I've ever heard. A spear is a spear. He does say a spear is a spear, and I put down whether it's in wrestling, wrestling pickles, or pop pickles stars. Or pop stars. I love that. I like that very much. <laughs> yeah, which is like, but that's the story of Mil Moritz, especially when it comes down to Mundo does eliminate, end up eliminating Chavo after hanging his nuts out to dry. And like between Mundo and Mill, Mill is very direct and brutal. Like he's going to hit a spear. It's not going to be the prettiest thing in the world, but mm -hmm. it's just going to fucking suck because the dude's just tackling you. Stryker does have a fun line. As much as I fuck, this dude's a fucking piece of trash. Johnny ends up catching Mill's leg uh, and sort of like turns the tables and Stryker calls. Everything's turned around. Now Johnny's on offense, Mill's on defense, and Katarina can be on anything she wants in that skirt. Which is like a very horny line, but yeah. it was cute. That, that's cute perviness. That's cute horniness. I'll allow it. But watch yourself, Counselor. Uh, come over here and sit on my lap or better yet, my face, Katarina. All right, Striker, you need to fucking go home now. You've had two, you've, you've had one too many boners tonight. Get out of here. Oh, please. Oh, oh, oh I'm pre-coming over here just thinking about it. 
Vamp also has a very cold line referring to Mil Moritz. Mil Moritz, that's a thousand deaths. Maybe Johnny's face six tonight, but Mill's got more to give. There's just something about like, I'll, I'll, <laughs> that's what I do. I have a thousand deaths and you can't survive all of them. Which is true. The numbers, the, the numbers, as far as how many deaths Mill's throwing at Johnny, just is too much for him. Mundo goes for the fin de Mundo, but Mill gets his knees up and lariats Mundo out of his soul over the top rope for the Millamuertes W at 10 minutes and 59 seconds. Also, Matt Stryker, after the 1,000 deaths, he's experienced six or so much more. Matt Stryker does go, and Katarina's nickname is Mill Spankings, and my bottom can take a few tonight. <laughs> yep. That's definitely in there. Don't watch this episode. Just trust us. These uh-huh. are uh-huh. all word for word verbatim. Matt Stryker, you pervy fucking trash bag from Queens. He stands up and he just has a big old wet spot near his dick, which is near uh-huh. his uh-huh. knee uh-huh. because he's got that thick hog. Congratulations on your penis, Matt Stryker. Uh, after the match, I also I also love there's like a close up of a kid in the audience. Yes. Real upset that Johnny lost. They just that kid's not happy. Cut to commercial. Yeah, he's th- he does thumbs down and is about to cry. It was great. It's very sad. But that's the match. Mil Muertes is moving on. The finals, it will be Phoenix. It will be Mill. They are both in the ring. I have thoughts. I don't, I don't know how I feel about this segment. Dario Cueto comes out of his office as Phoenix and Mill, again, already in the ring, ready to fight. Cueto comes out of the office with a leather strap in his hands. And he says, in my hands... I hold power. This is the Lucha Underground Championship. Woo, the gold is thrown down. Yeah, and actually, and I love that. I love this line, I, in my hands, I hold power. That's power. To me, that's a great line. That's like, this. it's more than just gold. It's more than money. It's more than, it, it's power is what this title represents. That's what I always say when I hold a gun. Yeah. That's why I say when I hold my dick. Or when I hold a down line. Yeah. <laughs> a down power line? Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> I love it. They cut to Machete. He approves of the strap. The unhappy kid is excited but concerned. <laughs> like, I love it. He's clapping. He's excited. But he's like, oh, no, not Mill. This kid is not. This kid. Well, because Mill's a b- evil man. Yeah. Uh, I lo- I, unhappy kid is my new favorite character in this show, by the way. I relate to. Un- yeah. He's like that kid when CM Punk came dressed as Jeff Hardy. That's what, giving off so much of those vibes. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, ah, oh man. It's, it's the one thing, if you're, ever, if you're ever a wrestling fan, I hope you appreciate children at wrestling shows. Because mm-hmm. it's easy. It's, it's, it's almost like, like old guys getting a little too deep into like certain comic culture or nerd cultures. Where it's like, Star Wars should be for kids. Yeah. Kind of. Like, like they, they, they have the best reactions. They just do. I loved it. And Cueto explains he has devised a new devastating match type for the title he calls Aztec Warfare. And the crowd, who's been ex- great all night. Like, they are a studio audience. I'm not sure. There's probably a way somewhere to find out uh, how many of these people are extras. How many of these people are, like, just fans who showed up. I don't, but they're, uh, either way. They're great. They immediately start chanting Aztec Warfare. Oh, this is a bringer show every single episode. Oh, yeah, right. I forgot. You have to bring ten, you have to bring 20 people for five minutes. Uh-huh. Uh, and then we all get to hear your sound alike. To f- I fucking hate comedy. Fuck comedians. That shit sucks. I love uh, it, guys. Yeah, no, it's real cool. Give me more Joe Coy. Oh, my gosh. I cannot wait for... You know what? I don't even want to say his name. I was about to make a... I was about to make a reference to a comedian that I don't even want to share his name anymore. Just fuck this dude and fuck that weird picture floating around Twitter of him standing in front of a bunch of lockers. What the fuck is up with that guy? I guess I'm not that into comedy because I don't know what you're talking about. Thank God. Uh, fuck him. The weird thing, so the crowd's real excited for the Aztec Warfare. I'm excited for Aztec Warrior. James, I can tell by the way your top button is still unbuttoned. You're excited for Aztec Warfare. I'm all business, guys. Hell yeah, business casual bitch sorry no dude i'm like every recording i'm wearing a three-piece suit minus the bottoms i'm i know (laughs) (laughs) Uh, so everyone's excited for aztec warfare the problem is and this is this is my problem this is where this segment kind of like 
I have feelings about. Because he immediately, he continues to talk. And the crowd immediately turns on him. Uh-huh. Like, real quickly, they go from chanting, this cool new match type that you created. Derek Cueto, what a great guy. Oh, fuck this Cuero. Absolutely. Oh, this guy won't shut the fuck. Like, they immediately start chanting Cuero, uh, Cuero at him. And it's like, because he, cause he just, like, he goes on, he goes on to explain this match, this Aztec warfare, is not the next match. Mm-hmm. This next match has implications for Aztec warfare. Yeah. And this next match will not determine this championship that I just introduced. This match, it will, th- that will be as, like, it, it feels like he goes on for a little too long and then he just adds too many things. Yeah. Right. Thankfully, it is a studio audience, so they're, lo- they're easier to get back on board and they do get back on board. But if this was not, a, if this was like, you know, any other crowd, he would have lost them so hard here. Yeah, they needed a Courtney Miller before a Smosh Games explaining the rules in a pre-recorded thing of like, hey guys, here's the rules written out exp- and read and edited together so it is perfectly 10 seconds long. Yeah, I don't know. It just, it, it felt weird to be like, here's this title that will not be decided tonight. And here's Aztec Warfare, which is not happening tonight. Or even not even mention the gold and just mention this match will determine Aztec Warfare, a devious new match I've created that will happen soon. Like, like, like don't even mention the gold. It's also a Royal Rumble. It might. Is it? I'm curious. I don't know what it is, but it sounds like it might be a Royal Rumble. No, he explained it. Oh, did he explain it? Yeah, he uh, uh, each this fucking dork. Because one of them's being the number one spot, so he will come in first, and then one will be the twentieth spot, which will come in last. And in between, someone will come in at the number two spot, the number three spot, the number four spot. It is a royal rumble. Well, no, we don't. A royal rumble has to be people going over the top rope. This oh. might be. I, I did he? I don't think he mentioned how people get eliminated. It might just be like a free for all, like pinfalls and stuff. Oh, that would suck. I don't know. Have you ever seen Elimination Chambers? No, but do Elimination Chambers have 20 people and one coming in every minute? Okay, not 20. Okay, yeah, there we go. They have, I think it's six or so. I don't know. I, we'll see. I've heard about this that Aztec Warfares are usually, are actually very good. And I'll say, and I'll say this, even for like, I was real worried about that three way ladder match and ended up being great. Yeah. I feel like this company has a great job of like, hey, here are match. Here's a match style that gets done other places poorly, but we're gonna do it real well. Well, no, e- even just making it twenty people opposed to fifty people is <laughs> a lot. You fucking. It's so fascinating that you hate Royal Rumbles as much as you do. The Royal Rumble was an hour and ten minutes. They usually are pretty long. It sucks, guys. Because, oh, one person every minute and there's 50 people? That's too many. Yeah, but one of those people ends up being like Scotty Too Hotty, and that guy's fucking great. No. And then another person ends up being... <laughs> no. What? He does the worm. Oh, uh, Give me someone doing the wiggle and maybe I'll accept him. Oh, them. yeah, oh, yeah, Norman Smiley. You get the fuck in here. Yeah, also, like, the way he walks off at the... Cueto uh, walks off at the end... He's holding his own belt in the air, walking up. Like, for a murderer slash occult criminal, this dude's kind of a dork. Oh, yeah. I I don't think I'll put it together. Like, like for someone who is definitely dealing with a devil, has definitely murdered people in the past for said demon, you're kind of a a nerd, my dude. I love it. It, This is going to be Tekken 3. It absolutely is going to be Tekken 3. You think it's going to end up with Ogre at the end? Yes. I'm excited. Because Ogre is, I believe, an Aztec god of fighting. I believe you're right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I think this is going to be Tekken 3. I hope so, man. I want to play as fucking Horring or like, I, you know, Eddie Gordo. I get it. A lot of people, a lot of people just pick up Eddie Gordo and they mash buttons. But like, he's a great fight. He's fun to play as. Yeah. I love Tekken 3. You want to talk more about Lucha Underground? Yeah, because we, we need okay. to be done in two minutes. Oh, shit. All right. Uh, well, in then about let's get to- two minutes. All right, well, uh, we'll do this. Fi- uh, it's the final match. It's a one-on-one. As Cueto mentioned, the winner of this match gets to enter Aztec Warfare last. Mm-hmm. The loser, in a cruel twist of fate, enters first. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of Mundo all over again. Uh, big power versus the speed, agility, and, ten- and technique of Phoenix. And yeah, I think a solid match. You're more of a Mil Muertes fan than I am. 
So I'm, I guess I'm curious, like, kind of like your takes on some on a lot of this stuff, on a lot of this match. It was great. One distraction of like, oh, I feel bad for him is Phoenix's ribs were cut. Like he had cuts yeah. on them, and I was like, that sucks. Every movement he makes, that's opening again, and I was like, oh man. I yeah. let this match get over as quickly and cleanly as possible so this dude can take a break. Yeah, and put on some of that sexy fucking ribs tape that I love so much. Ooh. Phoenix is getting a ribs tape, you say? Let's effing go, baby. Uh, Oof. Oh. DDP style. Ribs taped more like libs gaped. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, because Phoenix, again, like... For me, if you go, if you go, if you watch any match from this show, I'd say that first match, the t- uh, the ten way with Phoenix, he goes so hard. They mm-hmm. all really do. They all go very aggressive. So like seeing Phoenix just like as beat up as he is, is is hard. It's brutal, and he's still going. He's still he's still going really hard in this match. It's very exciting, and it's, and it's a lot of like Mills always kind of on top. Like Phoenix gets a few a few little like fight backs, but it's pretty clear that Phoenix is too beat up. Mill is just overpowering him. DDTs, he he hits the DDT. It's a running power slam. Eventually, Phoenix hits this uh head uh it's a handspring enziguri that Striker calls a Tajiri handspring. He doesn't work here. Tajiri does not work here either. I mean, technically, he's a free agent. Okay, I take that back. Sign Tajiri, but also stop calling. It's is it's so weird. I don't know why. Like if someone did it for another, if WWE did it for another company or for legends, I guess that's okay. Like they, they called out something as a great Muda spot earlier. I'm like, yeah, Muda's a legend at this point. But like Shawn Michaels and Tajiri in 2014 are just like WWE guys. I don't know why it's just it as a fucking dork who fu- is maybe a little too close to all of this. It just rubs me an odd way of like calling out Tajiri and calling out Shawn Michaels for, you know, that wrestling company that's much more famous and much more expensive and, like, way better than we are. But th- th- they aren't. They aren't better. I just, I just, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, but for people who are in the biz and not only just in the biz are fans of this art form, they're like, well, that spot, I have seen so-and-so do it hundreds of times, so I just, now that's a shorthand of it. Ab- exactly. It's something about doing it with WWE superstars. For whatever reason, it's it, I, if it was any other company, if they were calling out, I think Shinsuke was still with New Japan at the time, or if they were calling out AAA guys, like anyone, but for, for whatever reason, I think maybe because WWE was an island at this time, like they wouldn't reference other companies, or they if, if someone new came in, they wouldn't reference where they were before. Mm-hmm. So like that feels that's why it feels so odd to me is because they've isolated themselves so hard. Why are you? It just feels very odd to me. This, again, might be a me thing more than anything else. Absolutely a you thing. All right. I love Tajiri. They should still sign Tajiri. Mill counters Phoenix from the top rope with a filthy uppercut. Goozles Phoenix to his feet and delivers the flatliner for the W at five minutes and 47 seconds. I truly thought Mill was going to lose this so he could come in as number one and just be a dominant force and like get to the 20th spot, like go all 20 throughout. And then, you know, he's tired. He should lose. But I him winning was a surprise to me. Yeah. And now he's even even an even more dominant spot not just mil Mu- not just mil muertes is in aztec warfare that's terrifying enough but he's gonna enter aztec warfare the healthiest the yeah. most well rested probably having just sniffed his magic rock it's gonna be dangerous yeah and speaking of that rock ivalice that's her name right nope katarina katarina ivalice is son of havoc's friend yep 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 Katarina, if I went up against Mil Mortis, I, not because I'm scared of him, I would just like immediately tap out just so I'm of present mind when she licks my face. <laughs> it's like, please let me be alive for this. You know, not the last time I've been licked. Uh, also, shout out to the last machete appearance. Phoenix hits a massive corkscrew plancha and even machete winces after they land. Like a very hard landing for everyone. Phoenix looks hurt. Mil Muertes looks is laid out. And Machete's right there just going like, you guys are rough. 
But that's just because he's so empathetic. He says, oh, I've cut up many people with my machete, but this makes me squeamish. Ooh, I just want everyone. He just wants everyone to be okay and healthy and high five him. I, I want machete. It's gonna, I don't think he's going to be in the episode next week. And I'm not going to lie. It's going to be hard watching this without machete. I think he is. He, he'll probably. I hope so. It depends on how many they filmed in a day. I want him. He, whenever he leaves, it's going to be a hard day for me. He is the, there is so many good things happening on this show, but he's kind of my favorite. I just, he's kind of my favorite. I just love watching him react. Uh, after, all right, but that's the match. Phoenix is entering number one in Aztec Warfare. Ooh. Mil Muertes enters last. And there we have a post credit scene, a la Marvel Baby. In the backstage prison cell, creepy prison cell with an American flag, Cueto is holding the belt. He says, this is what I've always dreamed of. The gods will look upon this with great favor. The gold in this belt comes from each of the seven Aztec tribes. This championship is not only priceless, it's powerful. Then, to a wheezing stranger off camera, Cueto continues, I'm sorry, I can't let you touch it. I know how you like to destroy pretty things. James, what the fuck is going on? I don't know, but that's the same thing I say to Nicole when my penis is out. Perfect. <laughs> is Nicole the wheezing stranger? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Will she be the new Lucha Underground champion? Maybe, but per IMDB in the self-credits, Danny Trejo will not be back to Lucha Underground. No. <laughs> He's... You know what? I'm glad I know now so I can prepare myself. But what other celebrities? What We've had uh, Vince... No, not Vince Gill. Whoever that... ICP affiliate was in oh, yeah. the first couple episodes. And we had Danny Trejo, who will be mm -hmm. the next to grace ourselves. Will we get the spy kids? Spy. Maybe that unhappy child was one of the spy kids. Okay. Maybe Shark Girl, Lava Boy. Yeah. Maybe uh, Quentin Tarantino's feet. It could be anybody. Just to dawn, baby. Hell yeah. But that is episode eight, season one. A unique opportunity of Lucha Underground. And I, I like this. I like this episode a lot. Yeah, I've loved all of them. Uh, again, I was, and again, I was just surprised how like messy these matches could, and how easy it would have been. I feel like the simple choice, like, oh, these are two very exciting matches. We're setting up our championship. Let's put these in the first episode. And they didn't. They waited until you got to know the characters. Mm -hmm. And it made this so... I, that was It's such a wise decision that, like, again... I feel like nine times out of ten, it this is the first episode of this of the season, and then putting waiting till eight, I was so fucking smart, and I'm so glad they did that. Wise decision. Well, Phoenix had a wide incision. Got him, James. What's going on, baby? Talk to me. You mean plugs? Usually, you do yours first. Yeah, but I don't. I don't do anything. Twitch.tv GooseVK. I fuck on him, baby. Uh huh. And hey, guys, if you need someone to add in a film of yours preferably in the foreground hit up sean marciniak yeah that nerd fucking loves acting and chavo guerrero just like machete baby chavo you're my hate favorite do you have an agent we could direct people to yeah chavo guerrero esquire .org. Right. i am i am sean's agent of chaos so i guess mm -hmm. you could hit me up yeah and if you yeah but call him Chavo. Hold on, guys. Butter screaming at me to lift up the blinds. Hey, guys, head over to patreon.com forward slash MLM pod, where for $5 a month, you get exclusive content every single Friday. It's a good time. It's a good slime. We got comatose. If scheduling works, discussing the movie that you can watch now on Troma now. I should have said Ooh. that you can watch Troma now. Wow. That he directed and co-wrote called Foul Uprising. So check that out. Go over to the Patreon. But if you're a $10 patron, you get monthly exclusive content. Sean's been involved on some of those. You yeah. can also get shout outs on every single free feed podcast. So let's begin with those. Starting with Steve F., Eric Berry of Ranger Command Power Hour, Alex Z, The Waz, Orion, he's a rapper, Defo, D hyphen, F O, Kayla, AK, Two Grapes, Jordan B, The Chaos Witch, My Bickle, My Brother in Common Law, Joshua, Jake S., Steve Barnes of Sweet Child of Time. That's a podcast him and I do a 
Corey, the womb in which I emerged, my mom, and finally Lil Corey's BFF and roommate, Shane. I've been James. Be still, my little baboon heart. I've been Sean. And we've been Sweaty, sweaty time, time Pro, pro wrestling. wrestling. Bye. Yeah. Oh, <laughs>